Hello and welcome to all my students. I hope you all are doing fine and must be studying well at home. So today we are going to continue with the lecture number 4 of the chapter Cell the Unit of Life where I am going to teach you all the cell organelles separately one by one starting first with endomembrane system and then followed by semi-autonomous cell organelle, right? So without a delay, let's quickly start with today's lecture. First, starting with the cell organelles of endomembrane system. You all know this thing, beta ma'am has already taught you in her last class that there are four cell organelles, ER, Golgi, lysosomes and vacuole whose functions are intercoordinated, interdependent. Right, because of which all these single membrane bound structures together they make endomembrane system. So now we are going to discuss them one by one structurally, right? First, starting with ER, that is endoplasmic reticulum. Chalo. Now, this first point you're going to write for this is beta that this is single membrane bound structure. Second point you're going to write is this ER was discovered by scientist Porter. So this was discovered by Porter followed by now this is structurally represented by number of flattened interconnected units called cisterna which is found attached to the outer membrane of the nucleus. That means whenever you have to draw ER, you have to show the nucleus. So means this is my nucleus, right? This is the outer membrane of the nucleus. And now to this outer membrane is attached number of flattened interconnected units called cisterna. And the cisterna then folds to form tube-like structures called tubule, right? So basically, this is the outer membrane of nucleus and this whole structure is endoplasmic reticulum, right? So what are you going to write over here? The next point you will write is structurally beta ER is represented by flattened interconnected units, right? So basically it is represented by flattened interconnected units called endoplasmic reticulum or interconnected units called cisterna. Now from these cisterna arises the tubules. So basically over here beta these are the cisterna. These are the fenestrations of cisterna called tubules. And from cisterna and tubules arises the vesicles that carries the partially modified lipids and protein. So that they can be sent to Golgi body for further modification. So these are the vesicles. Right? Now, due to the structure of ER beta, ER is responsible for dividing the whole cytoplasm into two parts. Luminal space, the space which is present inside the ER and the space outside the ER in the remaining of the cell is known as extra luminal, right? So, next point you will write is that ER divides the cell into two compartments as luminal space and extra luminal space beta. Now luminal space simply means the space which is within the ER. So this is luminal space and space outside is known as extra luminal space. Correct? So this is the most important thing which you should know. Now proceeding towards the function of ER beta, functionally ER depending upon the basically types, the most important function of ER is synthesis of proteins and lipid. Now depending upon that which type of ER synthesizes, there are two types. 
that is smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum correct now smooth endoplasmic simply means when the cisterna are completely smooth they don't have any attachment of granular like structures called ribosome whereas rough endoplasmic reticulum are those on whose cisterna ribosomes are found attached because of which under the microscope they will appear granular correct so smooth endoplasmic reticulum means cisterna lacking ribosomes right so therefore there cisterna under the microscope completely appears a granular but when i talk about rough endoplasmic reticulum here you are going to write is cisterna having ribosomes right cisterna having ribosomes as a result they appear they appear granular under the microscope now these are the two types depending upon the presence or absence of ribosome now if i talk about the functions it is very clear that er is responsible for the synthesis of uh, lipids and protein so lipid synthesis steroid synthesis glycogen metabolism all are the functions of smooth endoplasmic reticulum but when i talk about protein synthesis specifically then that is the job of rough endoplasmic reticulum why because you know rough means ribosome ribosome means protein factory so like this you all can remember so these help in beta they basically help in protein synthesis right whereas smooth endoplasmic reticulum is simply employed for lipid or steroid synthesis right clear apart from this beta ser if it is found in liver cells then in liver cells smooth endoplasmic reticulum is also responsible for detoxification of drug as there they contain a special enzyme called cytochrome p450 in fact in the muscle cells ser commonly called as sarcoplasmic reticulum they help in storage of calcium ions which further helps in muscle contraction and relaxation so apart from lipid or steroid synthesis ser has different functions like i has already told you that is beta detoxification of drugs then helping in storing of calcium ions in muscle cells that further helps in muscle contraction and relaxation correct now coming to rer beta as i already told you that the main function is protein synthesis no doubt now imagine if the cisterna with the ribosome is rer so if that same ribosomes get detached from the cisterna can't we say that rer has now become ser the only difference between rer and ser is presence and absence of ribosome so if from rer ribosomes get detached then can't we say that rer has actually converted itself into ser yes so can can't we write this as a function of rer that they give rise to ser after getting ribosomes detached yes so rer give rise the to ser beta simply by removing granular structures called ribosomes right clear so this much you have to do for endoplasmic reticulum discovered by porter now moving towards the second cell organelle of endomembrane system called golgi bodies beta these golgi bodies were actually discovered by camillo golgi while he was working on the nerve cells of owl these are also single membrane bound structures 
concentrically arranged near the nucleus correct now they are actually functionally coordinated with er why because whatever protein and uh, lipid are synthesized by er they receive it they modify it make them ready to be either utilized within the cell or outside the cell right clear structure if i talk about of golgi bodies then beta golgi bodies are exactly same in the form of ser like ser consists of smooth cisterna tubules and vesicle so the golgi body also consists of the three same structures so in short you can say that golgi bodies and smooth endoplasmic reticulum are structurally similar right chalo moving towards now write this point the second cell organelle that now we are going to discuss is golgi apparatus right so first point they were discovered by camelo golgi while working in the nerve cells of owl right this is the first point second point structurally similar to ser third point found concentrically arranged near the nucleus concentrically arranged near the nucleus right what is the main role bit i if i talk about the functions then the main function is modification of lipid and proteins modification of lipid and protein correct now beta this modification of lipid is known as glycosidation kya kehte hain yes so this modification is simply known as glycosidation whereas modification of protein is known as glyco silation so this you have to remember so whatever er is producing that is lipid and protein they are given to golgi body for their modification and once the modification is completed then protein becomes glycoprotein and lipid becomes glycolipid right clear chalo moving ahead beta let's see the structure of golgi body and let's try to understand more about it so as i already told you that they are concentrically arranged near the nucleus and they are structurally similar to ser that means they have three defined structures flattened sac like interconnected units called cisterna that give rise to tubules and then followed by vesicle so this is how they are arranged now from the cisterna only arises the tube like structures like this this is how golgi body is similar to that of ser now beta the first phase now these are the tubules and these are the cisterna correct now the first cisterna to receive the vesicle from er now this is the vesicle from er correct so the first cisterna to receive the vesicle from er this cisterna is known as cis or forming or convex phase and from the cis itself modification begins that is glycosylation and glycosidation begins finally 
the complete glycosylation and glycosidation is done by the last phase of the Golgi which is known as trans also called as mature phase also known as concave phase right got my point so now from the trans a vesicle arises so this is the vesicle of trans that contains vesicle of trans phase that contains completely modified lipid or protein that contains completely modified lipid and protein right which are ready to be either utilized within the cell or outside the cell so therefore main function of golgi body becomes modification packaging of completely modified lipid and protein in the vesicle transportation and then secretion that means whether they have to be kept within the cell or outside the cell thus the function of golgi body becomes number one is modification followed by packaging followed by transportation and then secretion correct yes or no so these are the functions of golgi body apart from this beta golgi body is also responsible for the formation of sperm head if you remember sperm is the male gamete which is structurally consisting of three part that is head neck tail head consists of a special enzyme or the tip of the head is basically known as acrosome which consists of enzyme called hyaluronidase now this enzyme is actually the result of golgi body manufacturing so now the sperm head is synthesized by golgi body apart from this this next cell organelle which we are going to study lysosomes lysosomes are also the result of packaging from golgi body correct so what is the next function you are going to write they help in packaging of lysosome right next they also help in the synthesis of hyaluronidase enzyme hyaluronidase enzyme which is found at the tip of the sperm so see if this is my sperm this is the head this is the neck containing mitochondria and then this is the tail so this head now the tip of the head beta consists of acrosome and now this acrosome actually consists of enzyme which is known as hyaluronidase enzyme and this is manufactured by golgi body right clear everyone so this much you have to remember for golgi complex now one more point i would like to write i hope i have not written this cell organelle is also single membrane bound which is very very important question related to this can be asked to you now this is about the two cell organelles proceeding with the third one of endomembrane system that is yes lysosomes that were first discovered by Christian D. Duke. Now this is also a single membrane bound cell organelle which arises due to the packaging of Golgi body right. They are mainly responsible for digestion. Why? Because they contain 40 different types of hydrolytic enzyme. In ke pas 40 alag prakar ke 
they have 40 different types of hy uh, hydrolytic enzyme which helps in the digestion of material correct yes or no chalo very good so now the next point that you are going to write over here is the next cell organelle that i am going to talk about is lysosomes so lysosomes discovered by christian d duf are the single membrane bound cell organelles that arise in by the packaging of golgi body they developed from golgi body so first point single membrane bound second point discovered by scientist christian d duf third point arise from the packaging of golgi complex fourth point contains 40 different types of hydrolytic enzyme types of hydrolytic enzyme does beta they help in intracellular digestion does they help in intracellular digestion right clear to everyone yes very good these are also known as suicidal bags now why that i'll tell you when i'll explain that lysosomes beta they show polymorphism now what is polymorphism polymorphism means having different forms so here the cell organelle lysosomes beta they exhibit four different forms primary lysosome secondary lysosome tertiary lysosome and quaternary lysosomes so before i discuss these types of lysosome one more point i would like to tell you that the enzymes found in lysosome they are merely active in acidic ph if you keep or if you give basic ph to lysosomes then yet the enzymes will become inactive and hence they cannot help in the digestion process so if you really want that your lysosome should function then beta these different types of enzymes should be given which ph yes they should be given acidic ph correct got my point everyone chalo well done now let's try to understand the four different forms of lysosomes okay so for this suppose this is my cell right now this is my cell cell is having golgi body now you know golgi body gave rise to vesicles and suppose this vesicle contains uh, proteins which are capable of synthesizing hydrolytic enzyme so as soon as this vesicle will detach from the golgi body it will directly behave as lysosome and this lysosome containing hydrolytic enzyme that develops directly from golgi body beta is known as yes very good so this is known as primary lysosome okay now beta no doubt this primary lysosome consists of all 40 different enzymes Pakka, for sure this primary lysosome contains all 40 different types of hydrolytic enzymes but since the pH inside this primary lysosome is basic. Hence, the enzymes are not active. Abhi basic pH hai, to enzyme to kaam nahi karenge. Now, we have to convert that basic pH into acidic so that function can happen, right? 
and to convert the pH from basic to acidic, this primary lysosome picks up the proton from the cytoplasm, from the nearby cytoplasm, it picks up the proton because you know more proton, less pH, less pH, acidic nature by utilizing energy. So here energy is utilized in order to pick up the protons from the nearby cytoplasm. Primary lysosomes, they pick up the proton, their pH falls and slowly and steadily the enzymes will start becoming active. Tick. Meanwhile, this work is taking place. Jab tak ye kaam ho raha hai, the cell will engulf some or the other foreign particles, you know, inside the cell or sorry, outside the cell in the intercellular spaces. There are so many unwanted foreign particles present called as phagosomes, right? Which need to get soon digested and because of which only lysosomes are there. So this plasma membrane of the cell will bring the phagosome inside by the process called endocytosis. So now over here, this plasma membrane is going to pinch inward. We'll pick up the phagosome and then finally it will enter inside. Now this phagosome along with this primary lysosome, they will mix together to produce secondary lysosome beta also known as heterophagosomes. Right now this heterophagosome which is actually primary lysosome plus phagosome is containing active enzymes because of acidic pH. So now this secondary lysosome will actually start with the process of digestion. It will start digesting but of course it's very normal that everything is not going to be get digested. See it's very simple to understand whatever food you intake. So is your entire food getting digested only or only a part of the food is getting digested and remaining undigested portion gets moved out of the body. Kya hota hai? Pura khana pach jata hai ya thoda bhot reh jata hai? Agar jo thoda bhot reh jata hai, the part of the food gets remained, has to be thrown out of the body na. Same thing happens over here also. So you see, you're having secondary lysosome, right? The secondary lysosome will perform what? It is going to perform digestion and the undigested food. Now, the undigested food that remains inside the cell or inside the lysosome give rise to tertiary or residual lysosome. Correct? Yes or no? Got my point everyone? Chalo. Very good. Now we are going to proceed further. Okay. Now see. This tertiary lysosome is then. Iski koi zarurat hai? Nahi. So soon it will be thrown out of the cell by the process called exocytosis. So endocytosis helped in bringing the phagosome. Once digestion took place, whatever remain is there, now it will be thrown out of the cell by the simple process of exocytosis. So this is primary, which directly has developed from Golgi body. Secondary, primary plus phagosome, undigested tertiary. Now let's talk about the quaternary beta protein, uh, sorry, quaternary lysosome. Now you know, not only the external things has to get digested, sometimes what happens, you know, internal cell organelles also keeps on dying and in place of them, new cell organelles, they keep on rejuvenating, right? So whatever dead portion of the cell is there, that also has to be removed. So first of all, all the dead cell organelles inside the cell, they are collected at one place, right? So this is all the dead and worn out part of the cell which has to be removed by the digestion process. Worn out. Right? Now, 
now these dead cell organelles are then surrounded by primary lysosome right number of primary lysosomes they keep surrounding them now this together is known as quaternary lysosome also known as autophagic lysosome right now what happens this primary lysosome as their ph becomes active then due to that active ph they burst and then releasing the enzyme digesting the dead portion and making the cell happy lekin kab tak khush rakhega it is bursting now due to the bursting of cell organelles there are high chances that the enzymes which are released for digesting the dead and worn out part of the cell these enzyme may get spilled in the living regions of the cell as well because of which the living portion will also get digested and as a result it may lead to the death of the cell so this quaternary is or can be responsible for the death of the cell hence this is known as suicidal bag only this type of lysosome beta is known as suicidal bag primary secondary tertiary are not suicidal lysosomes only suicidal lysosomes is the quaternary or autophagic lysosome and what is the reason associated with it the main reason associated with it is that the primary lysosomes are bursting and due to their bursting nature the lys the 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 hormones are or the, the enzymes are getting released and there are high chances that the enzyme gets leaked out in the cytoplasm killing the living regions as well right got my point so this much you have to do for lysosomes now we are going to proceed further beta and now we are going to learn about the fourth part of the endomembrane system that is vacuole chalo aao bhai vacuoles ke bare mein jante hain thoda bahut let's see what vacuoles has to say so basically beta vacuoles are the uh, cell inclusion which is responsible for storing the extra waste product of the cell kya kaam hai iska storage so this vacuoles are mainly serving the purpose of storage second point they are surrounded by single selectively permeable membrane surrounded by selectively permeable membrane which is known as tonoplast now vacuoles they are more prominent in plant cell as compared to animal cells you know this thing in plant cells beta these vacuoles they occupy more than 90% of the total space right so in plants beta vacuoles occupies 90% of the total space but now if i talk about animals then in animals they are not so well developed they are poorly developed in short you can say even they are absent right now in plants the vacuole is known as sap vacuole which is actually responsible for storing extra water nutrients whatever uh you no know, secretory excretory product are there inside the plant cell their response all that water and sap sap means water plus dissolved mineral or water plus uh, you know unwanted product of the cell like for example the resins tannins etc they get stored in the sap vacuole temporarily in fact vacuoles are also responsible for maintaining the turgor pressure of the cell correct got my point everyone so that's it for vacuoles which you have to remember and now we are going to proceed now endomembrane system is done now we are going to uh, proceed with the next set of cell organelles 
called semi autonomous cell organelle so now we are going to proceed further with the next set of cell organelle called as semi autonomous in which we are going to study about two cells organelle both are double membrane bound mitochondria and chloroplast now question arises that ma'am why are they called as semi autonomous beta so why are they called as semi autonomous anyone having any idea no chalo no issues then ma'am is going to give you a very clear idea that why mitochondria and chloroplast are known as semi autonomous beta see what happens over here these two cell organelles they are known to have an independent existence even outside the cell inko cell ke bahar bhi rakhoge then too they can they can show survival why because they have their own dna they have their own protein synthesizing machinery they have their own uh, atp synthesizing machinery they can reproduce they can divide and increase their number by fission method to jab ye sara kaam khud se kar sakte hain independently then why do they need the help of other cell organelles and why then like you have seen er golgi body lysosomes all they are intercoordinated if you remove lysosome how golgi body will work or oh, sorry if you remove er how golgi will work if you remove golgi how lysosome will work so all these cell organelles are intercoordinated and plus they don't have any they they don't have their own atp they don't have their uh, they don't have their own uh, you know protein synthesizing machinery khud ka kuch hai hi nahi unke paas so they need the help of the cell and the nucleus but if i talk about these two cell organelles beta they first of all they both are double membrane bound first point second point both have their own dna which is double stranded circular single both have double stranded single circular dna both have ribosomes which is 70 s type both have their own atp synthesizing machinery that is why chloroplast and mitochondria they both are power house itself right the main mitochondria is the power house of the cell because it is providing atp to other cell organelles also but if i talk about chloroplast then chloroplast khud ka power house it's it's its own power house it's like the uh, it's like that they can own since they can uh, produce the atp required by them by their own they don't depend upon mitochondria for atp synthesis right so they are their own power house mitochondria mitochondria is the power house of the cell correct they both have atp synthesizing machinery plus they can reproduce and they can increase their number by fission by performing fission yes or no have you all understood till here now if you see beta if you observe one thing over here then don't you find some similarity of mitochondria and chloroplast with prokaryotic cell how many of you can see that similarity yes dna nature ribosome nature presence of atp synthesizing machinery plus reproduction by fission all these points together make them similar to prokaryotic origin so even some scientists believe that mitochondria and chloroplast have some connection to prokaryote they have some prokaryotic origin got my point now this is the common thing which you have to study between them now let's start first with the details of mitochondria and then we are going to proceed further with chloroplast right so first here we are going to talk about mitochondria
इट इज बेसिकली बेटा सिलेंड्रिकल और सॉसेज शेप्ड राइट हैविंग हाउ मेनी मेम्ब्रेन टू मेम्ब्रेन द आउटर एंड द इनर इनर मेम्ब्रेन इज प्रेजेंट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इन फोल्डिंग कॉल्ड क्रिस्टे राइट आउटर मेम्ब्रेन हैज सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ प्रोटीन एंड फोर्टी परसेंट लिपिड वेर एज इनर मेम्ब्रेन हैज एटी परसेंट प्रोटीन एंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ लिपिड ओनली राइट देर आउटर मेम्ब्रेन एज कंपेयर टू इनर मेम्ब्रेन बेटा इट इज लेस सिलेक्टिवली परमिबल ओइंग टू दी प्रेजेंस ऑफ मोर अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन ना बेटा माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया नॉट वेरी क्लियरली विजिबल अंडर द माइक्रोस्कोप for viewing them you need to stay in the cell with some specific dye like for example janus green this is the next point you have to remember they are not easily visible hence cell need to be stained need to be stained with dyes like janus green right clear got my point everyone chalo well done now you all know that because of the presence of atp synthesizing machinery they are known as yes they are known as power house of the cell kya kehte hain isko ise hum power house of the cell bhi kehte hain now i am going to show you the structure of mitochondria let's see so how many membranes are there beta two membranes this is the outer membrane followed by inner membrane which is present in the form of infoldings right now these inner membrane infoldings are basically known as cristae kya kehte hai isko beta these inner foldings are known as cristae now see over here space between inner and outer membrane this is known as intermembranous space filled with the fluid called intermembranous fluid one thing now the space which is enclosed within the inner membrane this space is known as matrix which consist of double stranded circular single dna and 70s ribosomes this is your double stranded single circular dna right correct got my point this is how your mitochondria looks like majorly apart from this beta inner membrane is also found attached with the help with the tennis shaped racket structures called oxisomes also known as f not f1 particles these oxisomes are actually having the atp synthesis activity and then they help in the synthesis of atp the process of atp formation in mitochondria is known as oxidative
phosphorylation. Yes or no? So what is oxidative phosphorylation? This we will do later when we will do respiration in plants chapter. Just remember that this is the mechanism of beta. This is the mechanism of ATP synthesis in mitochondria. Right? Clear? So in this chapter you just have to do a limited stuff. I hope you all have understood. If yes, then for today we are going to just keep it till here. In our next class, we will discuss about the second uh, set of cell organelle that is uh, chloroplast which comes under the heading of plastids. Then followed by your uh, ribosomes, little bit information I have to give about ribosomes. Then cytoskeleton and then last will be nucleus. So not much is left. A uh, little bit more amount of efforts has to be done and little bit more discussions has to be done. And then yes, your uh, this chapter will be over. Today's homework is to revise the chapter till whatever we have completed, right? Till mitochondria. Correct? Chalo. So, with this the next first question, select the main function of RER. So, the main function of RER is helping in protein synthesis. Right? I hope you all have understood till whatever has been taught to you. So, with this, I wrap up my today's class over here. Thank you for watching me. Till then, bye-bye everyone. Take care.